All right, taking unsolvable monsters and chopping them into small, solvable problems. Yes. Right? So you and I, we, were, we got a busy week. You know, every week we're working, we're talking to people, we're typing, we're doing business and science and stuff. <laughs> uh, but then, like, it's, it seems like every few months, there's just kind of like a forced sleep processing. Oh, yeah. You know, where it's like all of a sudden, we're kind of like subtly learning stuff in our own lives and then watching everybody else struggle with the same stuff that we yeah. do. You know, everybody yeah. does, doesn't matter what type you are. And then it's just like a big tidal wave of, like, realizations. Yes. That, that we'll go through. And we'll go to the whiteboard and we'll yeah. start writing stuff out and be like, oh, wow. Yeah. Here, here's a disclaimer to the end of the movie. Uh, what is it? A, a spoiler alert. <laughs> it, do, it does seem to be the hero's journey is about raising consciousness, which yes. is like your observers. You're not a dumb kid. You're a wise old person now. So and, so. and responsibility. You're doing more. What are you going to do about it? It, it seems like yeah. in, in this self-growth typing stuff just makes it worse. It just increases your consciousness. Yeah. But you're still a dumb shit. Yeah. So your yes. your like ability to to take action and be responsible right. is behind. So it's like this Oops. that <laughs> goes from bad to worse. Yes. It gets yeah. so much more uh, intense because you're now staring at massive debt. And a right. lot of that, like you could even go on an ayahuasca trip where you're now just looking Again, inside. Just too much consciousness all at once. All at once. Yeah. Right. And now you're left with how I don't have the skills to maneuver through right. this massive amount of darkness. And that's where you now have to get to the point where you are giving yourself a system to systematically problem solve. Not monster solve. Monsters are impossible you to solve. got to get that responsibility muscle, that strength, that yes. warrior side up to deal with all the stuff you're now aware of. Yes, exactly. You can see more, therefore you are now responsible for more. Right. So the first thing that you have to do, first of all, you have to understand that the things that are inside your mind that are created into monsters, that is coming from your default wiring. You have to know that there is nothing outside of you that is creating these unsolvable monsters. Just level 10, unsolvable you, you're coming up with questions that are impossible to solve questions. That is just demon functions freaking you out. Because every problem in the world, no matter how intense and crazy it is, as long as it's standing in front of your saviors, you're like, oh, we can chop this down. So true. Exactly. Yeah. And so th the first thing that you now do is you have to choose objectivity. Get outside of your worldview and you have to look around and you have to be like, objectively, who out there has solved this? Is it actually something that has been solved. Because you'll be like, oh, I have a horrible problem from my past. My parents abused me. I had I had, I had, just the worst life. Therefore, I can never win. You right. just created a question, created an unsolvable monster that from here on out is never solvable. Right. And you'd have to go, wait, 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 wait. Tony Robbins can solve this. Right. If Tony Robbins can solve this, if Oprah can solve this, if Owen Cook can solve this. There are tons of people on the internet tons. we're finding. Yeah. So can I. And then you have to choose to reframe that problem, that monster, into a solvable objective problem. And you've got to get to the point where you, you like, you literally have to get to the point where you say, no, no, to the no, fears. no to the fears, no to the panic, no to the unsolvable, no to the I'm a victim. You have to say no. You have to get to the point where you just stop believing the lies of there's no way to get out of this. Right. Even in the beginning. So this is something that I personally went through when we started getting into this op stuff, getting into the psychology stuff. I had level 10 like unsolvable monsters in my mind because I'm an ST blockhead. I'm not into the NF side. How am I going to get on the phone and help somebody with their patterns and their emotions Ah, uh, that's not the world. Like, yeah. I, I had a very fixed mindset about that. I'm into business. No, I can do the business. I'll just do the numbers. Let me get into that side of reality. I don't want to cry with people. I don't want to yeah. tell them how to feel. I don't want to solve these patterns for them. That felt like just, like, I could feel the bubbling up in my chest of being like, please don't make me do this. I can't do this. I'm not set out for this. And I just right. would create it. And just, it would be so much bigger than me, right? And then I'm like looking around, I'm like, hold on a second. Tony Robbins is doing this. That guy's an ST blockhead. If right. he can do it, why can't I? I've created this thing to be like, no, please not me. Oh God, you know? And if I just chose to be like, wait, is somebody else out there solved this problem? Oh, right there, just right, right. off the bat. Tony Robbins, you, Mel Robbins, you can find so many that have solved this level 10 panic in the real world. And instantly you have to decide, you know what? It's not real. All that stuff I came up with in my head was just fake because I was too scared to put pressure on my demons. Right. I just wasn't accepting that. 
Yeah, and when you look at like Jocko, right? Jocko has gotten to the point where he says, "Good." Yeah, he's got like an NLP gimmick going on. Oh, I love it. And I it's love like it. a it's like a whole chain of events. So Bethel, something bad comes in, and he says "Good." Yeah. Which enforces the RAS, whatever the hell, the brain to start yeah. looking for good. Right. And so your brain goes to work looking for it, and then you start. Good. Yeah. Okay, I gotta chop this down. I gotta break this up. How do you? I deal with setbacks, failures, delays, defeat, or other disasters. I actually have a fairly simple way of dealing with these situations. It is actually one word to deal with all those situations. And that is good. And this is actually something that one of my guys that worked for me pointed out to me. He would call me up or pull me aside with some major problem, some issue that was going on. And he'd say, boss, we got this and that, the other thing. And I'd look at him and I'd say, good. One day he was telling me about some issue that he was having. He said, I already know what you're gonna say. And I said, well, what am I gonna say? He said, you're gonna say good. You're gonna say good. Something is wrong and going bad. You always just look at me and say, good. Good. And I said, well, yeah, and I mean it. And that is how I feel. When things are going bad, there's going to be some good that's going to come from it. Oh, mission got canceled? Good. We can focus on another one. Didn't get the new high-speed gear we wanted? Good. We can keep it simple. Didn't get promoted? Good. More time to get better. Didn't get funded? Good. We own more of the company. Didn't get the job you wanted? Good. You can get more experience and build a better resume. You're gonna say good. You're gonna say good. <laughs> 